So I wanted to make a video to give you guys some updates on some stuff that's been happening and to also discuss uh, an issue I had with the two new Paragon locomotives I purchased, the L1 and the I1. Um, my club layout, uh, the Jackson Pontiac of St. Clair Railroad, uh, recently kind of regrouped uh, after the original founder of the club passed away last year. And so back in January, I had an opportunity to operate uh, my new Paragon 3 locomotives on the club layout. And I ended up having a lot of problems with them. I kept losing control of them. They kept like automatically reversing and moving a little bit. They would stop and they would reverse again and move a little bit. Um, I originally thought it had something to do with the DCC system. Uh, we had a Digitrax Empire Builder, or no, Super Chief, which I think was using the DCS 200. And so I thought maybe there was just like maybe there was a MU that, or a consist uh, in the system that had not been cleared. So I tried resetting the system, did a whole bunch of things. I uh, still didn't fix the problem. Uh, which was weird because I have been using these locomotives for about a year now on my home layout, which uses a MRC Prodigy Advance, and I also have a Digitrax Zephyr Extra that I've been using, which is, I think, the DCS-51, and I had no problems operating these locomotives on either of those systems. Uh, so I ended up contacting both Broadway and Digitrax, and Digitrax did not know of any issues, uh, but Broadway got back to me and told me apparently there is a known issue with some Paragon 3 decoders uh, that they have issues working with certain Digitrax systems, the older ones. So the DCS-200 is obviously one of them. Uh, so after getting in contact with them, they basically sent me two new decoders to swap out with the old ones. And uh, after doing that, I was able to get the problem fixed. So I just wanted to go through and uh, show you guys a little bit about uh, how to swap out those decoders. If you run into a similar problem, I would recommend you get a hold of Broadway. And uh, it'll probably be a very similar fix. Um, so go ahead and uh, I'll show you guys uh, what I did to fix it. So with the L1, as you can see, I already took the shell off. Uh, it's pretty easy. Because it, it's die cast, it just has these screws that go into these little screw holes that you can see. Well, if my camera would, there it goes. If it, uh, up in the corners, you'll see there's these little screw holes. And there's two down there. And this just screwed into that. And you can see I put the screws back in the shell. So that was pretty easy, self explanatory. For the I1SA, it actually has a plastic shell. And so to get to that, first of all, you got to separate the tender. Uh, when you pull these wires apart, I always hate doing this, uh, but you want to grasp all the wires and then just slowly, gently rock the engine back and forth until it comes apart. And then that way you don't have to worry about accidentally pulling out any wires. So with this, it's basically a pressed on plastic shell. And what I discovered is to pop it off, you'll see if my camera will work. Uh, you can see a little bit. There's a little tiny hole up here. Uh, it's not coming in very good on my camera, but just believe me, there's a little tiny hole here. There's one in each corner, kind of like the spot where you could screw on a die cast shell. And what I found is if I pop a little tiny screwdriver through that hole and push out on the edge of the shell, I can then get my finger or another screwdriver down underneath and pop the shell off. A little screwdriver and I'll just put that up in there and then just gently push down on it and you'll see it creates a little bit of a gap there and then what I did is I just took this other screwdriver so there. Right, that side and now I can pop this side up Same on the other side. That should have loosened it up and 
and it pops off. And then when you pop the shell off, and this is with both the die cast and the plastic one, you'll see there's these uh, wire with a little plug that goes to your reverse light. So you'll want to pop that out. Once again, just grasp all the wires, gently rock it back and forth, and it pops right out. I'm going to go ahead and do the L1. So this is the original decoder and I can't remember one of my locomotives I could not read a decoder when I uh, looked it up um, but you can see that this is what it looks like. One of the biggest differences between the original Paragon 3 decoder, the one that was having problems with the Digitrack system is it has this what I kind of think is like an add-on capacitor uh, sitting right here that this is hardwired into the actual chip uh, it's soldered right on there there is no plug for that and the new decoder uh, it doesn't have that there is no other capacitor connected to this that's what that looks like so there you go you can yeah, so you can see there's it's uh, this part right here definitely kind of tells you the difference, and it also has which if you look at this one, you see there's nothing surrounding that silver capacitor. This one has a couple of components connected to it. Uh, I'm obviously I'm not a specialist in electronics, so someone out there who knows electronics probably could tell me what those little things are. Uh, but that's the biggest difference that you can tell. So to take it apart, uh, first you want to carefully pop out the wires. Uh, I recommend, if you can, taking a picture of the decoder just so you can see where all the wires go. Um, a lot of them will kind of lay where they're supposed to go once you pull them apart. Uh, but that's always a good idea, just take a picture so you can have an idea of where everything goes before you rip it all apart. So you're just going to pop out uh, all these plugs here, just like I said, just grasp all the wires carefully, rock back and forth, never want to yank or force anything. Carefully pull that out. And you'll notice all these wires actually connect to the harness that connects to the locomotive, except for this one that goes to the speakers. And then the next thing you have to do is this is your antenna. This is a little chip, and you'll pop that out. That just slides off. Just goes into that little receptacle right there. And then to take this apart, you just have to unscrew. There's a screw right there, and there's a screw under this wire right there. Uh, when you're unscrewing this, though, be careful. There is a little plastic spacer underneath, and the decoder will come out. You can see it's attached to that capacitor. Like I said, you can see it's hardwired right in. So there's a little piece of plastic, or not plastic, but like sticky tape that holds that in place. Just pop that out. When you plug this in, it's going to go like that. So this is the front of the locomotive here. Here's the wire going to the locomotive. So the capacitor is going to aim towards the front. And I always recommend turning your screw counterclockwise at least half a turn until you hear a little click that sets and then, then you can start torquing it down. That way you make sure you're not stripping the screw and you've got it threaded properly. See that that's been reattached, so that's all good. And then the next thing will be to put in the antenna. Now let's find out on the other one, I uh, end up having to file off part of the chip because it didn't quite fit in between all these plugs. Let's see if this one fits better. Uh, no, it looks like I'm going to have the same problem. So, I had this problem before with the other one where this chip, the antenna, is pushing up against the plugs. 
So I ended up just having to take a little file and file off the side of the chip. Uh, obviously we want to be very very careful when doing that because you don't want to damage any of the electrical components. Uh, but I found that um, that seemed to help. So I just want to file it on the side. It doesn't have any uh, electronic components which I kind of found was pretty much this side here. So this side. So now you just have to reconnect all your wires. So I've attached all the wires again. Unfortunately I had some issues with the camera and was unable to finish filming the rest of the rebuild. But once I had everything put back together I was able to get both locomotives working. And as you can see they're both working perfectly fine on the club layout now. So thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe.